Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good afternoon to all of you. Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Wilson, fellow Madam Shahzad, Grace, Amelina, participants, members of the press. Well, we are we are getting right to the end. I am trying to see how you all can manage to stay back right up to the end. Uh, probably tourism is something very interesting, which uh, might have drive you to stay back. But from deep down in my heart, thank you so much for waiting back right up to the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer, King's, King's Tay Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific, for, mo for inviting me to deliver the special address in this afternoon or late afternoon session. Let me start off by saying that boosting Sarawak's tourism is challenging despite having a long list of unique tourist attraction which includes the culture, adventure, nature, food and festival, or CANFF in short. For the record, Sarawak is Malaysia's largest state and it is also well known as a cultural melting pot with 27 different ethnic groups with the Local folks having to speak 30, uh, 45 different dialects. It is also home to 56 protected areas, 37 gazetted national parks. We have got the most national parks in Malaysia. We have got five wildlife sanctuaries and 14 nature reserves. We even have got the largest marine park in Malaysia, the Lukania Shoals. With the rainforest, we have is the same as the size of Austria. Actually, the, 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 the state of Sarawak is about 124,000 square kilometers. It's, about, it's likely it's bigger than South Korea. Um, and the rainforest area is about the size of the whole of Austria, actually. However, a connectivity has always been a key structural challenge that Sarawak is facing year in and year out, and we are trying very hard to overcome that. It is no surprise that Brunei, for which Sarawak is the only Brunei and Indonesia, for which Sarawak is the only land-based neighbours, is traditionally the second largest source of arrival. Actually, the, the, the biggest arrival are from our neighbours. It, it also does not help that passenger service charges in Malaysia for both domestic as well as international flights have increased in recent years due to the federal government's equalization drives. On the 1st of September 2017, the government has started collecting tourism tax, which is, as, which is at a flat rate of ringgit Malaysia, 10 ringgit per room, per night from foreigners, regardless of hotel types. I don't know whether the next federal budget, whether it's going to be continued or not, because they have imposed another tax, that is the departure tax, which is commencing from September, yeah, from this month, actually. And in September this year, a new departure tax or departure levy on international flights will also come into effect. Nevertheless, pricing has remained to be a major issue in our efforts to boost tourism into Sarawak. 
Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, in, addi in addition to the issue of connectivity, the other structural challenges we face is on the ground. This also involves our local tourism players who are in need to be well organized and generally they are still playing the catching up role with the bigger players from the other states. That is why the Sarawak State Government, through my ministry, and Sarawak Tourism Board, which is headed by Puan Shahzad, are working very hard to engage with all the stakeholders in the local tourism industry in getting everyone to cooperate in becoming more creative and innovative in boosting our tourism industry. All of our stakeholders must play their role accordingly because together we can bring up the numbers that most importantly, but most importantly, repeat business will only come if our tourism product can satisfy the visitors' expenditure expectation. This is the shared responsibility of all of our tourism industry stakeholders and business owners alike. Ladies and gentlemen, this year is also our Visit Sarawak campaign 2019 or VSC 2019 and my ministry is targeting to bring in 5 million tourists into Sarawak. Even though we are still facing the main challenges in lacking of direct air connectivity from overseas, we are still optimistic of achieving the elusive for 5 million target. For the record, Sarawak has been receiving about 4 million visitors, 4.3, 4.5. It's always between 4, 4 million and 4.6 annually. And foreign visitors constituted about 60% of our tourist arrival. Similarly, my ministry is also stepping up efforts to bring in more Chinese tourists, as presently they constitute less than 10% of the total visitors arrival to Sarawak. And we are hopeful to double this amount of Chinese tourists arrival this year. This effort are undertaken by our tourism industry as part of the mitigating measures in views of the global trends which indicated the world is facing economic slowdown that has also affected the tourism industry. However, we still believe that the Visit Sarawak campaign can make this state a popular international tourist destination because it is being presented in a very big way. And next year, we're going to have the Visit Malaysia year. It will be a continuation. The Visit Sarawak campaign will not just be a one-year campaign. Uh, that is the reason why we did not stay down there. Visit Sarawak year 2019. We will be using that logo. We will still embarking on promoting Sarawak for at least five years using that same approach because it will be such a waste to have the Visit Sarawak campaign and at the end of the year, a lot of things will have to be thrown away because the letter hits, you know, the bags, the gifts and all that. Uh, so we have to be practical in this, that's why. And we are very happy that Malaysia on its own is also having this Visit Sarawak year 2020 which in some way will continue on our effort to promote the state. Just unfortunate, we are not getting that kind of support from the federal government or the federal ministry. I don't mind to share. Last year, 2018, just for events, we only get, the ministry only get 150,000. The cost of hosting this conference uh, is so much, much more. I don't know what's happening up there. 
probably because we did not vote for them. Uh, so we need to be penalized a bit. But we'll see again, probably because last year they're still getting themselves to be ministers, getting adjusted. And this year probably we might be able to see a better uh, support from the federal government. But even without those kind of support, Sarawak is blessed. Uh, despite only 5% royalty, we will still be able to manage. Uh, all the promotion overseas are all c coming in from the state. Uh, I don't wish to talk about politics here, but that is the reality that we are facing. Part of the initiative that has been taken is highlighting Sarawak's culture, adventure, nature, food and festival. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the people of Sarawak is blessed with some of the world's richest biodiversity. And we can turn these natural assets into the ideal selling points location for ecotourism project that will harness the full potentials of ecotourism in the state that has not yet been fully taped. By attracting more tourism dollars into Sarawak, the revenues gener generated by ecotourism could boost the economy of our local communities, who in return will provide the best hospitality services to visitors who are looking immersive cultural experiences. We also believe in responsible tourism and strong advocates our, strongly advocates our local to promote conservation and sustainable tourism development that will minimize adverse efforts on our environment, especially the Bonio rainforest. And that's why you see this year for on our 23rd Rainforest World Music Festival. It is a world-renowned music festival. We have even disallowed the selling of drinks using water bottles at the, at the premise or the venue, just because we do not encourage. But on the other hand, music lovers, they need to drink after all the dancing and all that. We provide 20 water dispenser, free of charge. Mm. So that is those little bit that we are trying to promote, uh, conservation, uh, responsible tourism in our little bit of way. And the last few days we have got this bird fair also being organized down here, which in some way we will be able to inculcate to the indigenous people as well as to the people of Sarawak to look at birds to love birds in its natural habitat. When I make the press conference on the bird fairs, I know there are quite a number of clubs down here, bird lovers. They called me asking me, we would want to participate in that program. So I told them, the organizer will not like you to be there with your birds because that fair is meant to be for bird watchers where they want to see the birds in its natural habitat. And I'm very, very happy that we are slowly going into that kind of approach. This is why Sarawak is still renowned for its traditional longhouses, which take the norm, the form of communal wooden residences built on stilt to provide inhabitants with a natural breeze and protect them from flooding. We therefore love to encourage visitors to stay in log houses belonging to the different ethnic groups or stay in one of Sarawak Iban's dwelling was listed by Lonely Planet in its top 10 ranking in 2014 for the category where to feel like one of the family. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to talk about the Federal Homestay Program, which has 
promoted visitor stay at our longhouses. As at the end of 2013, there were a total of 437 homestays operating in the state of Sarawak with 14,411 visitors, mostly foreigners, having experiences with such accommodation during their visit to Sarawak. According to the Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture Malaysia, or MOTEC, in 2018, a total of, it has increased, a total of 33,613 tourists have visited homestays with a total receipt of 4.346 million. Even then, the figures may may not, does, it's not an official uh, figure probably because there are quite a number, there are so many unlicensed uh, homestays and lodging house in Sarawak actually. The relevant authorities are cautious in issuing homestays license because of the presence of substandard properties that are also being offered to foreign and local visitors. Up to today, there, were, there are a total of 43 registered homestays with 607 operators throughout Sarawak. While rustic amenities are part of the charm of spending a few nights in a longhouse, the less bold tourist requires access to the rudimentary infrastructure that some homestays have not provided. Such issues are not only physical in nature. For example, a community that lacks the telecommunication equipment requires the field forward calls to respond to emails from travel agents and groups organizers will find it increasingly difficult to actively participate in any type of homestay scheme. Thus, we need to continue educating our existing and prospective local homestays operator on important matters that are needed to cater to tourist requirements and to satisfy the expectation when they are staying here for holidays. It can also be challenging to market our homestays establishment when they are not well linked to private tour operators who can connect them with the relevant counterparts at international level. This is why it is common for the local homestays marketing still largely restricted to individual websites or on social medias pages. These initiatives should be improved if the local homestay operators can come together as a united front in forming part of an aggregation, aggregation service or business alliance. Coming to the end, I think. Yeah. Another ecotourism related assets which has significant potential in promoting Sarawak to the world, especially among foreign tourists, are the national parks. Our national parks are quite very, very popular to the foreign tourists. The Bako National Park uh, is the most popular, is what I, have, I can see. Every day, there will be at least almost 200 visitors visiting the Bako National Park. In 2013, the Sarawak Forestry Corporation has recorded a total of 409,412 visitors who have visited at least one of Sarawak's 16 national parks. Even though this number does not account for unique visitors, but there is still great potential for our part to woo more visitors if there are more lodging facilities and better bedding, a booking system are developed in time to come. 
with regional and local tourism sector on the upswing, we are optimistic more visitors will come to Sarawak because of promotional efforts and also the introduction of additional tourism products that will contribute to the rising visitors number each year. The number of visitors arrival to Sarawak has shown an increase of 3.93% in the first quarter of 2019 over the same corresponding period last year. Sarawak has also recorded a total of 1,117,843 visitors arrival between January and March 2019. And the top five countries of origin are Brunei, Indonesia, the Philippines, China and Singapore. There have been quite a marked increase of visitors from Singapore. I know visitors going to Sabah from Singapore has been on the decline, probably after the setting up of our trade and tourism office in Singapore recently. We have been able to promote Sarawak better, and that is how it's going to be. Well, until August this year, from January to August, we have managed to bring in 2.9 million uh, tourist arrival, which I hope <coughs> the next few months will be the kind of events, mass event, mass sports event that we are hosting in Kuching and other parts of Sarawak, we will be able to see more visitors coming over to Sarawak and probably we will be able to meet to that elusive 5 million target. Another area which I would like to mention is the MICE segment, M-I-C-E, which, which has been demonstrated that through the strategic leveraging of competitive advantages, as well as through joint government and industry investment and collaboration, Sarawak can emerge as a viable regional player in targeted segment. Indeed, the state has become one of ASEAN top player in this like highly competitive arena. Its success in this segment has the potential to serve as a benchmark to the emulated to be emulated when identifying future tourism segment to pursue. Shortcoming in connectivity remain an obstacle in growth <coughs> as a lack of direct flight routes and end-to-end -end state highway limits the ease with which people can reach and move around the state. The, st the state unrestrained growth has never been the government's ambition as turning into a mass market destination would risk eroding the very natural and cultural attraction that have made Sarawak an appealing destination for visitors for the first time. It's, I'm coming to my last speech. Tourism has been identified as a vehicle to be prioritized for the contribution it can make towards a more inclusive model of economic growth. My ministry is making a concerted effort to disperse visitors to more remote parts of Sarawak as a means of promoting the development of some more isolated communities. At the same time, we are also working to ensure that sector development takes place in a sustainable and responsible manner. The Ministry, together with Sarawak Tourism Board and other agencies, would step up our effort towards positioning Sarawak as a premier tourist destination. Much more is needed to be done to promote Sarawak as a premier tourism destination. Events such as this conference is also helpful as it brings people from the peninsula as well from other parts of the world to this state. And end of October, 
the third week of October, we're also having our first Spartan race. I myself was surprised with the overwhelming response. The first time it's being held in Borneo, we are targeting 3,000 3, participants. Three weeks ago, we have hit 2,800 uh, participants and 60% of them are foreigners. So it looks like these kind of events are very much like because we have caught the, the environment, we have caught the, the, the jungles and all that to host this kind. And we are already looking at 2020 to bid for the Asia-Pacific Spartan Race. Mm. Lastly, I will end my speech here with hope that this session ahead will provide recommendations on how we further leverage on Sarawak's unique feature to draw more tourists to the state. With that, I wish you a fruitful session ahead and please also enjoy your stay in Sarawak. We've got so much to stay, uh, much to offer. Don't just come for the conference. Visit our cultural village, visit our Orang Utan sanctuary, taste our food if you've got time, visit our long houses too. Thank you, Yang Bohamad, Datuk Minister, for your insight into Sarawak's tourism efforts and joining our session ahead. I now hand over the floor to Yang Bahagia, Tan Sri Datuk Ahmad Wilson, by a Dandot, Chairman of the Sarawak Biodiversity Council, who will be moderating this session. Tan Sri. Thank you, MC. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's Ten past five, I know you want to go back. I know your wives and children are waiting, your boyfriend and girlfriends are waiting. Please bear in mind, spare with us for the next 20, 30 minutes and more. Um, I'm very happy to say here that, uh, in fact, I thought I was going to be the only man sitting here. There were three beautiful ladies here as panelists. But, of course, we, we have the minister here. So... Uh, you, you are a very lucky group of people. You know, we have three feminine uh, views. I didn't say voices to, to this subject matter. By the way, actually, I have quite a number of things to say, but I better leave it last because if I speak now, there will be no end to it. But let me wake you up first. I want an intellectual thinking. Question number one. Where do tourists, vocationers, especially the pianists, go to in, if they want to become tourists. You know where? Huh? Where do you think they go? If you tell if you know the answer, that's fine. If not, they go to Florida Keys. Okay? Small laugh, don't worry. <laughs> A second question, if you can answer me well now. You know these tourists were I think they were in India or even in Malaysia. They were entranced to see that this, this Indian man, or for that matter, the yogis and all this, were walking on very, very hot coal. Coal, you know, very, very, very hot coal. You know what did they say? You know what they say? That man must, had, must have amazing feet. F-E-A-T. Of course, F-E-A-T. It's an intellectual joke, all right? Now, with that, I think you should know tourism is not just about serious pro tourism products, but it could also be jokes left and right. I do have one. A beautiful Australian uh, blonde going, flying from uh, uh, Brisbane all the way to Perth, sitting with her in the plane, was a very uh, sprightly man. I think you know this joke. No, I'm not going to tell it for that. But the girl doesn't want to talk to him. So he has to give him a joke. He got to him a teaser. The teaser is fantastic. But anyway, that will be after this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have heard the ministers talking about tourism, what he thinks, where we are now, we are moving ahead. But I rather listen. To, we rather need to listen to the three ladies here. Uh, I don't have to read the CVs. You know it. First, uh, uh, Sazede. She is uh, CEO of Sarawak Tourism Board. We have uh, Gracie Jiki. Uh, from Borneo events. Once upon a time, she was also with the Sarawak Tourism Board, so she knows tourism well. And of course, there's a young but newcomer called Amelia. She's from Sarawak Conversion Bureau. 
What business has to go with tourism? Plenty. That will tell you the story. Thank you very much. So, Zede, time is not much, but do what you can. All right? Thank you. Give her a clap, please. All right. Okay, I'll try my very best. I know it's uh, the very last sessions. So, you know, Yang Bermuhammad, Datu Aji Karim, Yang Berbahagia, Tansri Amar, Wilson, my colleagues, Gracie, as well as Amelia. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, some of you are non sarawakian I do welcome you to Sarawak. Sarawak is a fantastic place. And you're in Kuching, like the minister said, don't waste it. Enjoy the food, enjoy the em uh, environment, and enjoy the friendship that we offer you in Sarawak. So I'm gonna, not going to take you, uh, I'm just going to uh, go through quickly what I would like to share with you. So just to keep you awake, I'm going to play a 30-second video. So before I play the video... I just want to show to you that, you know, when you talk about Sarawak, there are few words, okay? And I want to show and reveal you a side of Asia unlike anywhere else. It's about rustic. It's about authenticity. It's about nostalgic. It's about charming. Don't you agree? This word describes Sarawak? I'm quite sure, as a Sarawak kid, you would. So let me just go straight to the video. 30 seconds. Oh, sorry. How do I go back now? Okay. Now this, okay. Is that correct? <laughs> So that's a 30 second, uh, that's a 60 second ads that we've been playing all over, okay, to introduce what Sarawak. You, if you can see, it's very young. The reason why, you'll see in a short while the statistic of who are the visitors of Sarawak. The land of hornbills. A lot of mystical things. It's an alternative destination. You know, you can either complimentary come here and then go to Peninsula. Or you can make it a whole week of celebration or uh, visit visiting Sarawak. So, you know, there are a lot of things that's being offered. Visit Sarawak campaign basically is about branding Sarawak, changing the mindset and getting everybody on board so that we are all set and ready with a lot of interesting products which needs to be played by all stakeholders not just the ministry, not just the Sarawak Tourism Board, but all stakeholders need to play their role in making sure the Visit Sarawak campaign is successful. Now, I'd like to show you another video which is very important because these are the things that we organize in Sarawak and these are the iconic events. We organize about 105 events throughout the year, and these are planned, and there are more ad hoc events that comes in. So imagine what the minister had indicated. These are activities that brings in the numbers to Sarawak. So I'm going to share with you the Rainforest World Music Festival.
Thank you. So that is Rainforest World Music Festival, world-renowned top eight. Can you imagine? Nobody knows Sarawak, but they know where what Rainforest World Music is all about. So it is through events such as this that have placed Sarawak to the global and in the map of the world. So it is very, very important for us to understand how important this kind of events, and it has to be iconic to make sure people can see and can associate where how mystical, how fantastic our place is. It is only through this event, and we don't refer this as a music tourism anymore. It, it, I mean, sorry, about music only. It goes beyond music because rainforest world music is about getting the socio-economic basis kind of uh, platform making sure responsible tourism is there, making sure the experiential tourism is there also. So, Sarawa Air Connectivity, I think you have heard it in our earlier, um, what you call the speakers, as well as with our YB just a few minutes ago. Air Connectivity, is it a challenge or is it an opportunity? Okay, with Sarawa being the third largest island in the world, obviously it is an opportunity, okay? Yes, it is a challenge. We don't deny it. But these are the homegrown airlines that we have been working in, and we should not just depend on homegrown airline. We have been working hard, the ministry as well as Sarawak Tourism Board have been working hard getting Scoots working with us, getting China Airlines, I will not name exactly what it is, which we will be panned pretty soon, working very hard with Royal Brunei Airlines and working very hard in other countries that we are now in the pipeline. So yes, it is an opportunity for us to make it so competitive that the local homegrown airlines make sure their price can have to also drop because there are other airlines that are interested to come in because the homegrown airlines is making it very expensive for local to come to Sarawak. So it is an opportunity for us to work with international airlines. We also am looking into new market other than our other than peninsula or domestic market, which is a savior for us. We also uh, look into the Scandinavian market, China market, and also India market. These are market that has potential for Sarawak, and they have shown so much interest. We have made actually three years seeding to Scandinavia, and results are coming in because there are packages in Scandinavia now. We are now working with China, and we hope to get greater uh, direct flights now and getting packages working with them. And India, we just had met with India. They've shown interest to work with us on packages too. So, yes, the new market, other than Europe market, as well as the ASEAN market. Visitors' arrival from January to August, like YB had mentioned earlier, is 2.9 million, which is a positive of 3.17% increase as of last year. And of course, the target is a stretch market, but I always believe it's a challenge for us, and it is something that we should try to achieve. So far, the highest for Srawa is 4.8 million, and we achieved that in the year 2014 and 2017. And, you know, and this year, with 5 million, we hope to achieve about 8.18 billion in tourist uh, receipt. We are quite confident, although the number is 2.9 million, and that's already August, and some people were saying to us, that's four months, Shazad, how, how are you planning to get the rest of it? We know for a fact that August, September, November, uh, October, November are all peak season. We need to know, and that's why there's a lot of activities going on, and we hope and to achieve, if it's not 5 million, nearest to 5 million is what we hope to achieve. And we're very confident in that. Domestic arrivals has achieved 
uh, an increase by 10.64%. Basically, our focus this year is to ensure that we have made um, visibility, brand visibility, visibility in West Malaysia is very, very high, and that has created that impact and that double-digit increase. Basically, the, the, uh, the, the way people spend when they are here, if you notice, a bulk of it is from the airfares, of course, accommodation, shopping, um, uh, you have the uh, food and beverage, and travel and transport. If you were to look into that, you will see those are opportunities that we should tap in, in terms of iconic uh, accommodations. We can look in terms of the food trail. We can improve in that, in terms of shopping, not just the way that we want to compete with Kuala Lumpur. It's the authentic products of a handicraft. Increase it, improve the quality of it. And of course, the, the transport and the traveling um, uh, ways of doing uh, our and getting them to spend much more. Oh, let me go. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. I, I need you to see that there's more male than female coming here. And if you look, look at the profiles of the visitors, they are very youth market. If you look, they are young market and family market. And these are the FITs who wants to come to Sarawak. And because of that, our video needs to be attracting the millennial market, the young market, the hip market to come to Sarawak to say, hey, we have authenticity, yet we have everything that you want uh, to be here, and you can have it here. I give you just five minutes. Okay, okay, I'm going to finish it. Accommodation. As of now, we have a total of 291 hotels, small and big, and all with 17,000 rooms. You know, however, this is another opportunity. Three only branded hotels, Hilton, Merritt, and Pullman. And mind you, the top 10 accommodation in Srawa, most book, if you're in the international hotel, you are always taken up. So imagine if you have more international hotels. It doesn't have to be a four, five hundred rooms. It can be boutique international hotels that gives you an authentic uh, feel of what Strawa is because you do have market, the German market, who looks into all this authenticity. The European market loves our place. So you need international uh, hotels and accommodation. We advocate responsible tourism, and therefore it is very uh, you know, appropriate that when we have our iconic event platform, we use that to promote our responsible tourism. Ecotourism, as you can see, you know, we are very much into that, and through the, the um, what do you call this, National Park, we make sure that there will be uh, total protected areas of uh, 1 million by this year. So far, they have achieved 900,000 hectares. So we are very much, and there's carrying capacity. When you go to Baco, why uh, Minister was saying about 200? Because that's the carrying capacity of going to Baco. We have 4,500 longhouses, but we have only 43 registered longhouses as homestay. And these are what people love to see. And of course, if we can develop that and give them the experiential tourism, I think there's a big market that we can tap. Cultural tourism is definitely what we want. You know, our 27 ethnic groups plus also over 40 dialects, we definitely have different foods, definitely have different experiences that we can share. Medical tourism is one that is huge in, in Sarawak, you know, and we have about 48,900, uh, worth about 67 million revenue received from this. This is a business that we should not let go. It is so strategic for Indonesian to come to Sarawak and enjoy the facilities in Sarawak. 
with that, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you, and I hope it will make you see that there are great opportunities in Sarawak and for, for you to establish more things in Sarawak. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Cesade. Uh, you have used your 15 minutes very, very well. Um, no, I'm not going to summarize, but one thing very important, she did talk about events. You have one rainforest, a million and one people know it. Imagine if after today, all of you put forward another 20 events or 100. I think we have, we're going to enjoy it more. Thank you very much for that. Of course, he said many more. I like that term, experiential tourism. And what struck me was the picture of an Iban man. I can't help but to think that Sarawak now has turned Hollywood, Bollywood into Sarawood <laughs> with the Brook uh, uh, show now. You know? And I noticed one Iban man trying to overdress himself. Anyway, next, uh, Gracie, shall share with us your tourism events. Thank you. Thank you, Tan Sri. Uh, good evening, Wabi, uh, Dato Minister Tan Sri, distinguished guest. I'm going to talk uh, about festivalization. Um, it's very new, I think, for, for a lot of us. It's actually a subject in, in, in uh, event management now, and festivalization has actually been ongoing. It's just that it's like a buzzword, and now it's just suddenly come about. So I'm going to talk about to support what uh, Shazad is doing and what Sra is doing. I think we, we, we are known for a lot of wonderful events. So festivalization in a nutshell means adding the fun and creative element, elements into business and generic tourism. It is integrating Sarawak's tourism strengths and attractions to enhance the visitor experience. So that's what festivalization is all about. We are blessed with our tourism uniqueness. And we need to leverage on this and not think we have nothing to offer. I often hear my friends telling, ah, you know, Kuching got nothing to offer. How many days? I said, no. I said, we have 100 over tours and packages. Oh, ridiculous. Where? We tend to forget and always think next door is better, normal. Sarawak is one state in Malaysia currently. I don't want to say the only state. It's one state in Malaysia with the highest number of world-class and unique festivals throughout the year. You may not realize it, but the other states are very, very jealous about what we have. I cannot put our official stamp on this and claim to fame, but I know we are because of my involvement in this business of conferences, festivals and events and my own research carried out when I wrote my book on the Rainforest World Music Festival's 20-year journey. Uh, that was launched in 2017 by a minister. Currently, we have more than 200 festivals and events annually. And this number is growing as the government agencies, festival and event organizers, conference and exhibition organizers continue to churn out more festivals and events. So how do we leverage on this? How do we leverage on this? We, we have issues. We, we always talk about connectivity. We always talk about problems. But we actually have all these right here. And festivalization, as I mentioned, is something that is... Uh, it doesn't cost millions. It's just about creativity. So adding festivalization to an otherwise very simple or routine event will add to the attractiveness of the event simply because it will, uh, in strategic marketing speak, uh, enhance and develop an event to improve its product life cycle. So while there are many factors and other influences in the product life cycle of an event, festivalization can be one of the key strategies in, marketing, in the marketing plan for organizers. I strongly advocate that our festivals and events can be a very, very powerful strategy in marketing Sarawak for tourism and in positioning Sarawak if we are able to weave them into our tourism product portfolio 
and execute it well. You may have good strategy, but if you don't execute it well, it won't work as well. So in, in like, for example, in the conference business arena where business events, uh, which Amelia is, is, is going to speak uh, later again more, business events bring in large volumes of conference delegates. They spend more, they stay longer, and festivalization, if executed well, will increase the tourism spend and expand that value chain created. Tour operators can and should add festivalization elements into their group tour programs. It's very easy. It's, it's, it's not out of this world. It's nothing new. It's actually already happening, but it's just that they may not realize uh, about this. I recall the ICA Congress 2016, which was held in Kuching, where I was very honored to be a part of the BIT team. We went to Frankfurt uh, together with the Borneo Convention Center and the Sarawak Convention Bureau, known as Business Events in Sarawak, to help with this, uh, to help bid, and we won. And we won this uh, prestigious congress for Sarawak. We beat Prap. It was a big thing for, for us. At this congress, the Convention Bureau and BCCK created a mini rainforest world music festival to the 1,000 delegates, leveraging on our iconic, you saw just now, the Rainforest World Music Festival as a showcase during dinner at the Sarawak Cultural Village. To this day, some delegates are still talking about it. And I know two of my associates' uh, clients from Europe come, came back for that, just to spend the three days. Experiential tourism is a subset of festivalization. It is a key element if we want to continue to strengthen Sarawak's position as a destination that offers our unique attractions in culture, nature, adventure, food, and festivals. Travelers to a destination now seek out activities and events that will offer that unique experience he or she will not find in another place. While small is sweet as opposed to big is beautiful, where mass and over-tourism will eventually destroy the destination's market potentiality in the long term, today's travellers look for enrichment for the mind, body and soul. That's what we're talking about, festivalization. If we are able to fuse our natural attractions, unique events, and our festivals into all the other events that we have already occurring in the state, we are able to add to the enrichment in a visitor experience and thus attract tourists through our marketing and packaging. We have just concluded the third edition of the Kuching Waterfront Jazz Festival organized by our uh, State Economic Development Corporation, SEDC, and announced uh, next year's dates, which is the 30th and 31st of October 2020, where our Honorable Minister, Wabi Datuk Karim, suggested that the hotel with the new dates support and complement the state's Another event, which is forthcoming, the International Dragon Boat Race 2020. It's also at the same dates, can we be? Where international paddlers coming in and from around the world will paddle in the day and enjoy an evening of the jazz, featuring international jazz musicians, as well as showcasing our very own local jazz talents. So this is festivalization at its best and I can only thank our minister for his far-sightedness in suggesting this. It was his idea. I didn't even think of it until he, he mentioned it. So thank you, uh, YB Dato. Festivalization, though, is not just about music. Although it sounds fun, festivalization, you know, it's, it's happy. So that, that word is, is in itself. It can be about food. It can be about wellness, therapy, sports, jungly stuff experiential excursions, herbal tours even, community outreach programs, dance, 
cultural immersion workshops, and more. There's a lot, lot more. So Sarawak has so much to offer. We just need to marry and fuse these elements to complement and strengthen what we already have. This is the business opportunity. I will not miss this one. This is the business opportunities for our various sectors in this industry to now look at how we can all, from the different sectors uh, and stakeholders, contribute to this synergy and at the same time create another revenue stream for entrepreneurs, operators and tourism stakeholders. So I'm going to end my talk here to show you how a simple, uh, a simple festivalization can enhance an otherwise uh, routine or even boring tourism product. This, this, little vi this little video has gone viral, so I, I picked up because I'm allowed to. This tour, all, tour guide is from Tamil Naidu. He takes tour groups and, and tourists uh, to, for temple tours visiting ruins and centuries old heritage sites. So it's a very uh, dry and can be boring, you know, looking at old ruins and abandoned heritage sites. But I want you to watch this guide, how he, he, he thrills his visitor with just a simple gesture and initiative to enhance his tour. Thank you very much. It's our classical rhythm. For that, how the dancers, we do the performance means we will shake the head like this. We will rotate the head. Storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a very old uh, heritage site and it's a very boring uh, and for tour. The waves, we Look do at like him. this for the waves. And for the cobras, we do like this for the cobras. <laughs> and for the lotus flower, we rotate like this to do the lotus flower. And for the birds, this is head, body, and feathers. Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> and we rotate our gifts all together in the name of dancing Shiva and the positions of Arvati. Woo! <laughs> 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 um, if there's one word that you, many of you have known, uh, I was very, I mean, festivalization is a very interesting. I thought she, she was not right. So we, I look in the internet, it's a new word now, <laughs> festivalization. Um, well, every few years we have this. Um, we have one more uh, panelist, uh, Amelia. Um, All right, thank you minutes. so much. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm going to stand up because I think if I sit down and listen to my own presentation, I might fall asleep. So if you don't mind, YB, um, YB Dato, Tantri, I'll be walking around in front of you. So, how many of you have heard of Sarawak Convention Bureau or business events Sarawak in this room, besides you? <laughs> and Dylan, and all right, thank you so much. That's very encouraging. I see six, seven hands. That's very good. So, Sarawak Convention Bureau or business events Sarawak, now we call it, also known as BE Sarawak. We were formed in 2006, and we were the first convention bureau in Malaysia. In fact, we are three years older than the Federal Convention Bureau, which is Malaysian Convention Exhibition Bureau. So it says a lot as a pioneer in the industry. So, you know, this morning, when I, when I was here this morning, most of the session are talking about trade, talking about business. And it's all about serious matter, it's about finance, it's about number. But, you know, in order to attract business and trade in Sarawak, it needs more than that. For example, how can... Okay, for example, if you look at business events, business event has the ability to 
be the platform for all type of business from any industry for people to meet, for people to share their research, product launching, etc., etc. even for, you know, even to get an investor coming in. But when you invite those business coming in, there's a lot of things besides the business. You know, business doesn't have to be boring. It can be more fun, just like what our colleague here has shared. It's tourism. But by saying this, our role in, as a business event is not only to market Sarawak as a business event destination, but we are also support and bid for convention and business uh, convention exhibitions, meeting and incentive to, to Sarawak. So how many of you have hosted a conference before beside KSI? Not many of you. And why, why are we not hosting a conference and looking at the conference as one of the way or platform to get investor in, to show off what sort of business that we have over here and use it as a platform to show that, hey, we are in Sarawak, we have this industry, and this industry is very strong. For example, oil and gas, for example, you know, our agriculture, and etc., etc. So, in short, I know that we're, we're short of time. I'm just going to show you one video. I think this one video will talk to you, will show you the impact of hosting the conference, not just in terms of tourism perspective, it comes to the number, how many you know, um, delegates, international and national delegates coming in, but also looking into the impact of the socio-economic that particular sector has brought in by, using, you know, by having a conference in Sarawak. So please play the video. Thank you. The reason why we have Katil as the local host for this conference is not only benefiting for Sarawak, but also its country itself. Sarawak is actually rich with agriculture, especially palm oil industry. Their biomass is generated, that which is abundant, but is underutilized. So we would like to find alternative to convert these waste to energy resources or any useful materials. By providing this platform, we are not only able to learn from other experts from all around the world, we are also able to share what we are doing in our country and also for itself. We always consider conference very important source for networking and collaboration. Anyone who wants to do research has to do good science. That's a primary requirement. And anyone who does the good science, the good science needs to be known to the people. After this conference, we'll start formal discussion for that kind of networking and collaboration where researchers from Malaysia, from UTP or Curtin uh, University would move to one of these countries, for example Brazil, for example South Korea, and work on the topics which are of great relevance to this season. As an academician, I strongly believe that conference, especially at the international level, yeah, we bring all these great minds together because breakthrough discovery is through combinations of the great minds with an effort from various sectors and with the establishments of the pilot plant, you know, in uh, Curtin University, in this area also, it will strengthen up Malaysia uh, and Sarawak uh, aspirations to be, you know, leading in this area of bioprocessing. This international conference gives us this platform to explore how we can unlock and do international collaborations. It will bring up Malaysia to be known internationally. All right, thank you. Um, just to add on the video, this conference contributed to Sarawak economic impact, which means uh, ec economic tourism, with 658,000 in estimated direct delegate expenditure, which has brought about 18 countries, with 70% are from the international delegates from the total registered delegate number. And this is the first time to be held in Malaysia and is be held in Miri. So from our current survey, more than 70% delegate extended their stay for three to four nights to explore Miri and other cities in Sarawak. 
So that is for the economic impact. So when we talk about the Sarawak legacy impact, some of the highlights of the conferences was the discussion on the new technologies related to bioprocessing and biomass energy, which align with Sarawak Corridor, Corridor Renewal Energy Initiative, um, focusing on palm oil industry and Malaysian government also to promote extensively the research and renewable energy in the 8 to 10 Malaysian plan in order to increase the use of renewable energy up to 11% in the year of 2020. Also, what's great about this is that, you know, the one that I really, really, really looking forward is that the brand new dedicated lab for bioprocessing and biomass energy research at Curtin University. And I believe that what Miri, Miri can lead Sarawak and also Malaysia to strive in this sector. So from this video also, as you can see that we are also in line with the um, transformation um, plan of Sarawak government um, with Sarawak seven key focus area. The first area of the business event that we're looking into is um, the industrial development, including score focus area, urban development and redevelopment, service industry, social development, agriculture development, environmental development, and digital economy. So basically, what has been covered by the uh, by other panelists and speakers this morning, they are all under you know they are all under our category also for the focus in hosting business events um, in Sarawak. So that's all from me. If you need more information on how we can collaborate, and you know, like normally people use the word supporting, how we can support your conference, but now we look at it in a different perspective, how we can invest in your conference and ensure that every conference that you host in Sarawak, the return of investment, not only to the economic impact, AKA the tourism impact, but also to the legacy impact, the intangible impact that you would like to achieve together with the Sarawak business community and the government. Then my team is at the back there. Dylan, Anadia, and John, feel free to contact them for more information or talk to me later on. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Fox, please don't go back first. This may be the first and only time we are with the minister here for this particular occasion. You see, I wanted to summarize this. We have heard the three ladies, event management, festivalization of events, and of course, he talked about business enterprise. But we are lucky to have the minister here. I do believe that some of you, even though it's so late now, if you do have any questions, please direct your question to the minister. I invite two very uh, in, uh, good questions from them, so that you, at least he can make an announcement for us. Okay, folks, the floor is open. You will direct your question to the minister first. Um, if there is any. Hmm. Yes or no? No takers? I think there's a lot to absorb. Okay, I'm not going to let you go scotch free right now. Oh, there's one. Good. Great. Please. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a short one. YB Menteri, I just would like to um, say a little on the homestay. Uh, based on your presentation just now, you illustrated that there are about 43 homestay operators in Sarawak, a number of which are long house, um, long house um, owners in various parts of longhouse owners um, comprising the various races in the group. Now, the figure four point, I think I heard you say 4.9 million, say 5 million, which is not very much. Daya Chamber has, over the past two or three years, been trying very hard to help our people to participate in homestay as an economic sustainable activity so that they could earn a little bit of extra cash in order to help them with their cash flow and their routine lives. Now, we have not been really in, in tune with the ministry in the sense that we have not been able to really 
request or work with, with the ministry as to how we move forward. But we do have had the benefit of the assistance by Traju. And we have, uh, we managed to register five dire, five dire homestay operators duly certified by the Ministry of Tourism and having been given the plaque. Now, can you please say a little bit on how you think we should um, move on forward in the sense of trying to, there are various, we have had a homestay website, which is, which consists of some 30 homestay operators, very well done, it costs us, I think it's about 130, 150,000 to do. But the economic benefits out of that is still very, very negligible. So if we can probably seek later on ways as to how we can work with the ministry, then we can share with the uh, homestay operators, who are quite good. They do have their own. Rantok meeting one time used to have a few million of turnovers of business when people really go there, according to Tuarma Jamil Anki. So in other words, uh, if it is possible, because we are trying to measure how our people could really participate meaningfully in homestay by virtue of the fact that these have been our own homes, our own areas, and these facilities are there. It, it can be done, but the sad thing is it is very challenging to do that. As we can say, uh, uh, within a short, within three years, we managed to say, get certified only five, lah, honestly. So please uh, share your thoughts on this. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, very big thank you to the proposal of the question just now. Tourism is a subject matter which come under the federal lease, actually. Uh, but then that does not mean that the state government is not doing on its own to promote tourism because after year in, year out, we notice that the assistance from the federal government, even though it's in the, in the federal lease of the federal constitution, whereby tourism should be uh, very much assisted as far as infrastructure by the federal Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture. So the lease that we have got, the 400 plus lease, uh, the lease that I had mentioned, a lease that we got from the Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture, uh, Kuala Lumpur. I can see that uh, homestay is a good avenue for the rural folks to be able to participate in their own way. Mm. to get the visitors, especially the foreign tourists, have a feel of how it is in the interiors. Well, in the, in the, urban, city, in the urban places, in the cities, they don't need to stay in all those places. But then private sectors will find it too expensive to, to set up hotels. Uh, and furthermore, we wouldn't want to see the environment to be spoiled by having too many uh, structures, cement structures in the rural area. We would want it to be preserved. And if there is any that we would encourage from the private sectors in the rural areas, in the interiors, is for them to build up facilities or resorts that would blend with the surrounding. So in the meantime, apart from making the tourists have some feel of how the lifestyle of those in the rural areas, and also as an economic help, at least as what we mentioned just now, at least for them to make a little bit of money, the, the, gov the government is assisting the government is setting, the federal government is assisting. But then we notice that uh, there are a lot more that need to be done. That is where our Tourism Board, the Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture, Sarawak, probably might also need to look into this in a deeper sense and how to promote 
how to get all those homestays to be of the level that it should be. Tourists doesn't like to see the dirty toilets. Tourists somehow also do not like, to, from from our own experience, to share to share the same houses. So we will try to look. If it is a village, it would be better to have a separate building or separate household or separate hut purely to cater for the tourists. If it is a long house, one of the billet or one of the room must be, or one or two of the rooms in the long house must be totally without local inhabitants and purely just for tourists. That's how I, I look. And we'll try to look into this in a uh, deeper sense. I do feel that uh, this, there is uh, uh, a good opportunity down here for it to grow. Okay, I hope that answers. Thanks. Okay, um, because of time, I, I'm sorry I have to just limit to one question, but that's a very relevant question, the uh, uh, for your uh, thoughts. I actually did experience a uh, homestay with tourists one, one time, many, many, many years ago in Scrum. What I noticed was we actually, they, they, the kampong, the longhouse, actually was there, functions was at night. But somehow the people in Scrum, in that village, longhouse, make up another small little longhouse, three, four, five doors. That's where we were staying. We're staying. That's where the tourists were staying, actually. I mean, I mean that's, that's one solution. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I suggest like this? If any one of you or any of you have any ideas of what you want to put forward, there are, there's the ministry, there's the tourism board, there's two other people. Put forward your ideas and let us see that these ideas will turn, will turn out into something commercially viable, uh, socially acceptable, uh, financially feasible, etc., etc. Uh, so don't worry about it. Please do it. I will have the final say, sir. <laughs> as chairman. Uh, please bear with me. Number one, I want to say this. Having been working with the government for so many years, there is the oil and gas industry, the timber industry, the plantation industry, the industrial sector, etc., etc. I think it is about time now for us to look at tourism in Sarawak it's not just that tourism sector, but also a tourism industry, which will provide income, revenues for the state. They may turn up into the billions of ringgit. We have done that for score, 330 billion. I'm not saying that they make this into a 330 billion ringgit. But maybe there's food for thought so that people will have income, people will have employment, people will create skills, people will become creative, amongst other things. Um, perhaps this is something that ministry could look into it. In other words, it's not just tourism per se. Can we have one or two more questions? Oh, okay. I stop there. One or two more questions after Temungong? Just in case there might be some queries. Yeah. The floor is open. Thank you, Mr. But please keep it. So that is my first point. We need to look at tourism along this line. And perhaps Ministry and Minister we can work together as a team, tourism board, ministry, officials, SCB, uh, private sector, even ourselves from BCCK. We can work together to do this study. And this study will map out and tell us exactly where we can collect that to do that business. That's number one. Number two, um, I know we are talking about M-I-C-A-N-F-F, uh, uh, M-I-C-C, but I remember the topic and the minister actually did say that Sarawak is one of the richest, uh, it's an area that is rich in biodiversity. I happen to be the chairman of the Sarawak Biodiversity Council and I'm overseeing the work at the Biodiversity Centre. We can work together to make this biodiversity. I mean, people come to Sarawak to see our biodiversity. In fact, my, my dream would be we work with the, together with a tourism group. They can buy our bio products. You know, the medicine that make you look younger and younger. They make you look stronger and stronger for both men and women, etc., etc. We shall try our best. And perhaps uh, work together with researchers and those from China, Europe, and so on and so forth. Number three, um, if I may add also, sir. Of course, Minister talks about air connectivity. I agree with him wholly 1,000%. 
except that I just want to add this. We were always, people were always saying that nobody come to Sarawak because there's no connectivity. That's rubbish, bullshit. We could do more. You know what score we did? We were able to attract 100 plus billion ringgit. Did they complain about air connectivity? No, but they come because we have something. Even Bulu today is in the red screen. People will come. Rainforest music. Far away, but people come. So I think it's a question of what products we have. And it got to be the get global product that make you feel good and everybody look forward to it. Um, so, but, but of course, air connectivity will help. Last but not least, perhaps, 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 John Denver. <laughs> what I mean is, you know, we are very lucky that the state has already pushed Mulu into the red screen of the world. Every day people come there and so on and so forth. Sir, I'm sorry I have to add this. But of course, when they arrive there, they want to click, go into the Instagram, go into the WhatsApp, cannot connect. No connectivity. You have to rush to the <laughs> lobby of the hotel. Alangkah baiknya, sekiranya, if we can set up this uh, towers, communication towers tomorrow. But the towers should go like this, from Miri or wherever, to Marudi, Marudi, Mulu. That way, for sure, your Wi-Fi will work. And I can imagine those tourists come in, uh, however you dress, you come in, you take a picture. On the spot, you can connect Geneva, London, uh, Frankfurt, or Australia, for that matter, Singapore. Uh, and not to wait for more. By the time you go in the room, you go and see the calves, see the bed, pack. The whole night you do it. That is, I would say, free promotion for Sarawak Tourism Board and for Sarawak. I stop at that, sir. Thank you very much for everybody's participation. Thank you very much, Minister, for uh, staying with us. Uh, I know he is he's busy, but your uh, presence with us clearly shows that you have a uh, deep feeling for this subject matter. And we do believe that Tourism is the way forward for Sarawak in the future. Thank you.